All right. 7 p.m. You want to wait a few minutes or no? Let's, let's start talking Clone Wars. Yeah, let's start talking. Yeah. I mean, I, I've got a heart. I've got a heart out at eight o'clock, so we need to get this thing going. Oh goodness! Okay. <laughs> well, season seven they wrapped up, and then they announced the Bad Batch. Yeah. What do you think? I'm excited. I'm I'm ready. I mean, I am too. Hunter Wrecker, Crossbar yeah. Tech, they're all awesome. Yeah. I was saying earlier that I personally have a love for Wrecker. <laughs> Oh yeah, really? Because he is so ridiculous, and that whole thing about I'm just afraid of gravity, <laughs> no. and then like he he's just and even the the uh, well the part that was taken out of right. the the new one where he was like. I would have her negotiate with me anytime. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> about Padme. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Was it a satisfying, did y'all feel that it was a satisfying conclusion to, uh, well, the, the Clone Wars, the series? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I think ultimately Dave got to, uh, and that's, I'm sorry, Dave Filoni got to wrap yeah. it up the way he wanted to. I mean, so. Uh, you know there was a couple arcs that we didn't get to see there was the uh cad bane arc you know the bounty hunter arc we but we saw the animatics of that at some point but we never got to see that fully developed which would have been nice that's one of my favorite characters is cad bane and yeah. i would love seeing him in something again somewhere i don't know where but it could possibly show up in the bad batch e easily yeah i mean gosh yeah. we could even have like a quinlan voss show up in the bad batch I, yeah, mean, I started to say would you rather see him in the bad batch or would you rather have him do like they did quinlan in the novel turn uh turn that arc into a novel i like yeah, that novel yeah the novel the yeah, yeah the novel's very good i mean but uh, I, we're gonna i think we're gonna see quinlan voss i think we're gonna see some jedi yeah. in the bad batch i mean they're not just gonna waste the opportunity uh post clone wars to not throw in some jedi that we know are alive yeah i feel like I you wanna... have to yeah. yeah 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 you don't go you don't go visit that era without bringing in the jedi when yeah. they're plentiful they abound everywhere uh, i love <laughs> though i love though that they took one one batch of people from one episode and said you know what Let's just do everything about them from here on out. And right. I'm okay with that. Yeah. yeah. I, well, as long as there's more new Clone War cartoon business. Mm -hmm. I'm right. I was just telling Marie before then, are y'all familiar with the ratings? They dominated the streaming. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. Last, that last season? Oh, yeah. It was yeah. very lucrative for, for yeah, Disney. It, yeah. it even gave Mandalorian. They, they consider Mandalorian 2019 rather than 2020. Makes sense. But, yeah, Clone Wars, and I'm not just talking about the Disney Plus stuff. It dominated uh, CBS's Star Trek stuff, everything. Mm -hmm. it, was, yeah. it was, which is not difficult to do, I understand. <laughs> oh! But, you, you oh, know, it's... Man. So, I didn't mean that fire. bad. I, I love... Um, uh, I love the new Star Trek, not Picard, uh, the, with the ship, the special <laughs> ship. <laughs> Dis Discovered. The one, Look. Yeah, there we go. This the is not I a Star Trek. Remember. This is not a Star Trek panel. We don't need to go off on tangents here, Stan. Yeah. We're doing that in like three hours, I think. But yes, we are, Joe. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, the ratings, uh, the ratings for this are just out there. I rewatched most all of the Clone Wars leading up to uh, season seven. I mean, it got a running start. Did y'all did something similar, right? No, I didn't I have time. I didn't. That. I didn't have time for that. I mean, <laughs> I would have loved to have, but I mean, I, I did not have time to go back and watch all of the stuff leading up to it. <laughs> what about you, Marie? Um, for the Bad Batch arc, I did rewatch the animatics for each oh, of the episodes. Cool. Oh, cool! So when I did my reviews for them, I was able to compare the changes that were made. Mm -hmm. Um, and some of the changes were. Watt Tambor was originally super like devious villain. Like yeah. I'm gonna use neutrality and I'm gonna yeah. get past everybody because I'm neutral. And then they just made him super creepy scary. And I was like, what? 
that was weird <laughs> but um but yeah that was really cool watching the animatics back and they added some things that were that were really great too like the whole anakin padme hologram hand right. touch yeah oh my heart yeah that was a good but, I, I got a question specifically for Joe Crow. Joe, on, on your all-time list of science fiction television series, so far as important societal importance and entertainment and everything, where does Clone Wars rank? Um, that's a deep question, Stan. Yeah, wow. <laughs> Wow, that's uh, for Friday night at seven o'clock. We're going going hard. Uh, <laughs> I, re I mean, as it's kind of up there uh, because it Star Wars is such a huge thing, like over here, yeah. and, and everything else is kind of over here. Mm -hmm. But for Star Wars to have this thing that's I, off the top of my head, I don't know how many episodes there are of Clone Wars, but to have been able to do what Star Trek has done forever, which is, you know, dig into all the stuff and have a zillion episodes, Star Wars finally got that with Clone Wars. Right. And got a bazillion episodes to dig into minutia and to explore like, corners that that they never explored before so no i'm yeah clone wars is way up there i mean you know you're you're obviously missing you know sequest dsv <laughs> the most Dang it. important science fiction program well, ever but like, i like liked it when the submarine ended up in the cornfield <laughs> is is like let's say off the top if clone wars is like number five you got your sequest is six it's and close then, close and then of course the top four ahead of uh of uh clone wars would be auto man manimal yes knight rider and i want to say airwolf at the moment so i regret asking the question joe all right you can <laughs> that's my you, job the listeners can can take a shot because joe mentioned manimal yes it's not a, <laughs> a panel that Joe doesn't mention Manimal on. Everybody, please take a shot. I, I think personally <laughs> for me, it in re-watching it and seeing all the strands come together, the stuff Lucas was doing, the uh, war profiteering, where he subtly took them and, and changed a couple of elements of them, and uh, uh, the, um, the Trade Federation and the Techno Union. I think they did that in what, season five, season six, something? No, season five. I had to admit season five. Right. Oh, season yeah. six. Season six was the yeah. Netflix thing. Yeah, that was the oh, Netflix yes. carryoff. But <laughs> I, I think for me, it, it, it may even surpass Twilight Zone and the original sixty-three Star Trek. Uh, sixty-three Star Trek being set in a time period where it was very important to get messages across in that, and Twilight Zone as well. But this, I think, it does it better than both of them. Hmm. I really do. Okay. Michael, bold. Mary, I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm you know, I I super love the series. Of course, I mean, I think anything Lucas and Filoni um, is the the best Star Wars. Uh, you know, there's there's other stuff mm -hmm. out there that has good elements to it, but I think anything that that Lucas and Filoni are involved in is really top tier Star Wars. And I that know. that that last two episodes of Siege of Mandalore is probably some of the best Star Wars I've ever seen. Um, mm -hmm. Which it's a shame if anybody deprives themselves from watching this series just because they think it's a cartoon. I mean, it, it is yes. way beyond uh, anything like that. I mean, t if for me. If they could have done this in live action, they would have. Sure. I, I think so. Difference. Yeah, I think so. I mean, look at it that way. Yeah, I mean, uh, Ray Parks might have a tough time, although he did he did motion capture for that last yeah. that last uh, battle that he did with Ahsoka. I mean, so uh, maybe he still got it. I don't know. I mean, I, I know he probably still does. I think he's. Been, I know he's been training because uh, I think it was today. Uh, they rumors came out that perhaps Maul is going to be in a live action series. So. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I mean, there's so many rumors flying around right, right. now. I mean, <laughs> They're everywhere. 
And, they can and, pretty much do anything they want to with that stagecraft technology, though. I mean, yeah, they made yeah. the Mandalorian. Uh, you don't have to go location shoot. You just do it all there on the stage and pretty much anything. So um, the possibilities and, are endless, really. And it's safer now, too. So, mm -hmm. uh, Marie, what you, you're a fan of other science fiction. I know your main thing is Star Wars. Yes. But you, it, do you think it's too much to rank it up there with, say, uh, 60 Star Trek and Twilight Zone? Um, I, the Clone Wars has meant so much to me from the very first moment that I watched it. I just, the fanfare in the beginning, the, the stories, the, the politics, the... I there's I love how it's able to have a whole arc where it's just the droids doing crazy things. Mm -hmm. Like oh, that arc is one of my absolute favorites. I adore it. Um, and then you've got the like Jar Jar in Clone Wars is hysterical. Yeah. Like. I enjoy Jar Jar in episode one, but Jar Jar in Clone Wars is top tier. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and C-3PO is my favorite, is one of my absolute favorite Star Wars characters because I deeply feel him. I understand him. <laughs> so <laughs> so I, I love him in Clone Wars too. Like that one episode where they go to Rodia and Jar Jar and C-3PO have a little mishap. And it is the most adorable thing ever. The like, Jedi walking around. <laughs> yeah, like where the ship falls into the swamp and then Padme comes up and she's like, what happened? Did you get attacked? And C-3PO was like, no. And she goes, Jar Jar? And he goes, Jar Jar. And it was just like, they all understood what was happening. Right, yeah. But um, no, I just love how it's able to take all those different beats. It's super serious. It's super comedic. It's very political. It's very dark. Like, mm -hmm. it can do so many different things and look into deep lore as well. Um, so for me, I just, I can't get enough of this show. I absolutely love it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and the, I mean, the good thing about it is it's very rewatchable. I mean, it's one yeah. that, and you can even use it for reference. I mean, if you're trying to figure out um, a, a certain thing, especially in, in regards to the to the Force, they explore the Force really uh, more deeply and better uh, than some of the live action stuff does. Um, yeah. You know, the live action stuff, especially the sequel trilogy, seems to think that it's really intelligent when it comes to things. But I mean, I, I think, go back to the clone wars and that's where you're really going to find um the meat of you know what the force really is i think feloni just knows it better i mean he just mm -hmm. really understands it he doesn't have encyclopedic knowledge or anything like that but he just understands the concepts of the force better than um anybody that worked on the sequel trilogy i don't know i mean he he damn near has encyclopedic knowledge of it well um, i just mean from like a trivia standpoint you're not yeah, going to be able well, you're to not yeah. What was the number of the trash compactor? Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's not going to know trivia stuff. <laughs> he might well, he probably does, but yeah. <laughs> who has who has time for that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I mean, Rhett, Rhett wants us to say that Chris Terrio understands Star Wars. I mean, I, that's not a name that we should even mention on this panel. Is Chris Terrio? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's stick with clone wars yeah exactly yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and that's academy award winner chris terry yeah, yeah yeah I mean, yeah exactly I, I i i don't know that he is uh if he is related to the host of dance fever danny terrio but we don't know nobody knows what you're talking about but you're but you joe nobody yeah, has any idea what you're talking about right that's now. pretty much true all the time but I, um, i've got a vague idea but i'm not going to let on <laughs> right uh, rhett knows so um with the with the bad batch show being announced i mean what type of things do we think that they're going to um delve into with that series i mean we know it takes place after the clone wars I mean, are we going to find out that those four guys never had a chip because they were different? 
you know, from they were the bad batch mm. from the beginning, so they never had chips in the first place. Or um, it may not have go... affected them the same. They may have had more right. of a fighting chance like Rex did. Mm -hmm. I want to go into just the the underbelly. I want to go into the Star Wars underworld, which I think we were promised, maybe not promised. They said they were gonna like twenty years ago. Yeah, I want to. I want to yeah. do that. I want to. I want bounty hunters. The Mandalorian's done a lot of it, but I want. I want bounty hunters. I want the dregs, the hive of scum and villainy. I want all that. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, and we certainly got a lot of that in, in the Clone Wars. I mean, we, we had Black Sun, Crimson Dawn. I mean, we had all the syndicates in, around. Crimora, I think, was even in there. I mean, we've, we had pretty Pikes. much, yeah, Pikes and the Hut. I mean, we had pretty much everything um, except Kanji Club. Uh, I wish we would have more Kanji Club. <laughs> to go back to the Kanji Club. But um, so I, I think that we're, I think that's a good assumption, uh, Joe, that we're going to have that. Um, that's a, an area that a lot of people are interested in is just in general um, the goings on, you know, of, of anything the shadow collective was involved in, you oh, know, yeah, with, with yeah. mall. I mean, that, oh, yeah. that stuff was so popular. And so and, um, th they'll do it. They'll go into that stuff yeah. for sure. And also, of course, yeah, I, I don't know uh, how much the sequel stuff relates to Clone Wars stuff, but the very tiny bit that we got into um, with uh, Finn about them kidnapping children, the mm -hmm. First Order kidnapping children, I want right. to dig into Stormtrooper stuff. And that's what, mm -hmm. where the Bad Batch came from. So, For the First Order or... Oh, no, no, I forget the first order. Just uh, the. Uh, <laughs> well, that's, you were saying Finn, and then you, well, you said, but the Empire wasn't necessarily kidnapping, or or has there been. Something no, there, they right? were. The, hu the Hux did, like Hux's Hux? dad. Okay. Hux's yeah. dad was really into taking kids. Well, that and, was, yeah, that was all metered out in aftermath. Yes. It, talking about where he's. He, yeah, and, then, and that plan, that's where the first order came from. But yeah. the. Uh, the stormtroopers, I mean, by and large, they were enlistment, weren't they? From, yeah, the, so. from the, for the most part, yeah, for the most the part, Jedi right. Yeah. I mean, even Luke wanted to go, I mean, to the, to academy, the academy and, and betray yeah. them and go to find the rebellion, yeah, right, exactly. So, yeah, it was all enlistment at that point, yeah. but even in the Republic, I mean, we have that whole Clone Wars arc where palpatine wants to steal force sensitive children mm -hmm. and i love the name of one of the children his name is we done yes we done <laughs> and i'm like what a great name yeah, that's, but, that's um, lucas lucas is really uh really good at those names <laughs> i forgot all about that <laughs> so you know there's that that little baby um Oh gosh, now I'm blanking. But there, there are like three babies, yeah. and they get kidnapped and taken to Mustafar, mm -hmm. and then they end up. Most of them end up getting saved. But that was like the beginning of kidnapping children. Was when mm -hmm. Palpatine during the Republic was kidnapping force sensitive children. Yeah, they, specifically force sensitive and all. Yeah, and, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it just. Uh, yeah, there's several aspects they could explore, but do you really think they're going to send the Bad Batch in to the uh, underbelly of the, uh, well, of, you know, the crime syndicates and all? I, I think the possibilities are endless because you're, you're talking about an era that there is just mass chaos, basically. So you've got the Bad Batch. They have witnessed the Clone Wars. They've witnessed Order 66. Then we've got the series starting and they're going to just be on the run possibly from inquisitors who knows i mean if the inquisitors are going to be involved in trying to round up the rest of whatever clone troopers might be out there including them you, um you don't get an a-team aesthetic kind of feel if you can right. find them yeah you exactly know, you know that sort of no no it's certainly it's, cer it certainly is going to be it could be mission of the week type thing where they yeah. you know go mm -hmm. on different planets and save the day in a different way each week i mean the but i think that we're going to go into the underworld i think that we're going to have quinlan voss we're going to have uh these 
these bad batch clone troopers contacting whatever Jedi are left uh, because the Jedi are going to be in hiding, of course. Um, and so it's, it's, I'm very excited about the series. I mean, because in and around what's going on with the bad batch um, is what I'm more interested in. I like them. I like those characters, but I'm just interested yeah. in what they're going to situational, get, what they're going to get yeah. themselves into and who we're going to see um, like ancillary characters around them. Yeah. Uh, Marie, yeah, we, we've mentioned Quinlan Vos a number of times. The last we heard of him was the novel, right? Dark Disciple. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. we haven't heard much. I, and, you yeah, know, I, we don't know what happened. Well, Sith, Obi Wan mentions him in Revenge of the Sith. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, I just want to make sure we knew where he was. But yeah, I'm pretty sure because I remember. He's Outer Rims in Revenge of the Sith. Sure, yeah, I mean... In, it, because in the um, the Darth Vader comic, Farron Barr, the Iktachi previous Jedi Knight who pretends he's a Jedi Master, he's mm -hmm. talking to this one person um, who is the only Force-sensitive person in his group, and he says, go try to find a Jedi master that's still alive. Mm -hmm. Quinlan Voss might be one of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, so yeah. I mean, the, I, I, we're, I think we're going to see some inquisitors. Um, I mean, I don't know how many episodes or how much the focus will be, but I mean, we're, we're there. And I mean, even, yeah. even the, the new video game, I think the, some of those characters in that new video game could easily come in and around the bad batch. Uh, because that takes place right after Order 66 also. And the Jedi are kind of on the run as well. So yeah. um, it's going to be good stuff. I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. Oh, me too. Yeah. But what about, what about the uh, stars of the seventh season, the Martez sisters? What are we going to... Uh. <laughs> what? What, Joe? What? You have something to say about the Martez <laughs> sisters? No, no, I'm pro-Martez. <laughs> <laughs> I think that uh, they're going to still be around also. I mean, you know, ah Ahsoka's going to make contact with them again at some point, I would think. Isn't there rumors about a sequel to Rebels? Something follow... I mean, eventually we're going to get something to follow up Rebels. Yeah, we I have mean... have to. Uh, yeah, I, but... I, don't, I don't know if it'll be live, a live action or what they're going to do because, you know, we obviously have Ahsoka is going to be in live action Yeah. Um, in Mandalorian Season 2. Probably just one episode very quickly to set up whatever her series is going to be because, I mean... If you hire an actress like Rosario Dawson, you don't use her for one episode in Mandalorian season two. I mean, and, she's and how do we all feel about that casting? Yeah, it's great. <laughs> I mean, it's real. It's really good casting. Um, yeah, and it, it's it's good because she's obviously older. I mean, in this time period, mm -hmm. so I think the it it works great. I think it's going to be really good, and and you have and she's going to have her own series. You you, you oh, just don't got to hire her for one off thing you just yeah. it's yeah. impossible to do that um and i think one of her shows that she was on recently got canceled and so i think rosario dawson's available for for whatever comes next with ahsoka so cool. that'll that'll be good but um yeah I, I think that ahsoka and the martez sisters are not done i think also you know like you mentioned stan we're gonna see the follow-up to rebels at some point um, ezra's coming back Oh, yeah. Ezra and Thrawn. Yeah. Thrawn, we're not, we're not Thrawn more that. than Ezra. Yeah, we're not. Done. Thrawn <laughs> is not gone, and yeah. they went out of their way to emphasize that. Yeah. So, <laughs> I mean, I think that they should just go go ahead and hire La Lars Mikkelsen, you know, to do the live action. Also, he does the voice, <laughs> and he would be, he looks great. I mean, he he looks the part too as an actor. Have you, so. have you seen his brother? Have you seen uh, oh, Mikkelsen's Mads brother? Yeah, yeah, he's in yeah. a lot of stuff. I mean. Yeah. Hannibal and, and all of that. But. Oh, I'm sorry. I've got the two mixed up. Yeah, Lars. I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. That is, that's Lars from is, House of Cards. Yeah. Yeah, he has not done as much as Mads Mikkelsen. Mads Mikkelsen certainly, you yeah, know, been, been in more more stuff, but um, he, I think that would be great to just go ahead and cast him. He'd if, be perfect for it. He's, I mean, my God, he's what, six foot five? Yeah, he's tall. He's yeah. really tall. Yeah. yeah, intimidating and everything out of makeup. 
So, I mean, it, Marie, if you were going to pick an arc out of the last season, you know, that had the three arcs, which one was probably your favorite, you think? Oh, um, I'm definitely going to say Siege of Mandalore because when I first heard about the fact that it was going to be Siege of Mandalore, I was like, oh, come on, like more Mandalore <laughs> stuff. I was like, whatever. And then when it actually came to fruition, the fact that it overlapped the way that it did with Revenge of the oh, Sith, yeah. mm -hmm. my prequel heart was beating out of my chest. And I was just like, oh, this is so good. Yeah. And like, I forget if it was the second to last episode or the last episode that began with the funeral music from Padme's funeral. Mm. I mean, and that whole score was amazing. The I Siege of Mandalore was all, so yeah, good. Mm -hmm. But that, the, the min minute that ep that particular episode started and that mm -hmm. funeral music was playing, I was like, Padme! And started mm -hmm. crying. And I was just like, oh my God. It So yeah, definitely Siege of Mandalore because of what it was able to pull oh, yeah. out and connect because you, you know, know how i am with connections we forgot we forgot you know to say spoiler alert padme's dead sorry <laughs> sorry to those <laughs> watching <laughs> Oops. yeah spoiler alert our Oops. bad our bad <laughs> oh, wait. don't tell them about the connection between luke and vader though for goodness yeah, sake. yeah no no we don't Get need to go there perhaps. no <laughs> <laughs> Boy, it's looking for a shock for those teddy bears. <laughs> no, but I think that I think that that whole score that Kevin Kiner gave us, um, you know, interspersed obviously with John Williams, really, I mean that that last arc, yeah. that Siege of Mandalore arc, was some of the best. I, I, I know I've said it already, but I, if it weren't for this particular season of the Clone Wars. I was in a bad Star Wars place because of the sequel trilogy <laughs> and, and this, and this series. And that's why I'm like, you need to watch it. If you're a Star Wars fan, even though it's an animated show, if you're not into quote unquote cartoons, I mean, it, the, the show in and of itself is, is great. And it's the whole, brilliant. I mean, yeah. it, it, and yeah. we're not, I, it, it's, it's not like, Oh, I, I love Star Wars. So I'm going to say, this show just topped out the original 1960s Star Trek. I mean, that that series means a lot, a great deal oh, yeah. to society as a whole. I give this, I give this a lot of thought because I have nothing else to do with my time anymore. <laughs> and <laughs> uh, and so when I say that, so far as the socioeconomic issues and everything that Clone War addresses and is able to still mm -hmm. tell this wonderful story and further this universe and all that it does ultimately hit the top of the list on uh, important science fiction stories. Uh, yeah. Televised series, definitely. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, yeah, you definitely, if you've not watched Clone Wars, you definitely need to. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and I think that that, and I know we don't have a panel this weekend specifically talking about Rebels, but I think even though Rebels got that maybe did, sort of yeah. a, a rocky start, um, it ended up being really important also because it yeah. continued to expand just, at least in Filoni's mind, just the different sides of the force that, did a wonderful right. job with that, that uh, you know, the world between worlds and, and that whole concept, um, albeit kind of kind of weird and unexpected, it, it still opened up the door for some really cool stuff that he was able to do. And I, I, don't, I don't know that we'll ever see anything more de delve into the world between world stuff, but I mean, for, for the time, it was cool to see. I mean, it was just really interesting. It's a different aspect of the force. And I mean, it, I, I don't jump up and down when we get time travel going in something like Star Wars. Right, yeah. right. Uh, no, I'm the same way. Yeah, but... <laughs> so far as the aspect of the force and the way they used it is that everything that has happened has already happened in this fashion. Nothing's mm -hmm. being interfered with. A right. circle turned right to that moment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm good with that. And I like that as an aspect of the force. And yes, if that was out there, Palpatine definitely be all about that. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I uh, mean, if there's one negative thing to say about, um, Ahsoka in general is that Dave Filoni probably will never kill that character off, which, you know, finding unique ways to continue 
uh, telling stories with Ahsoka will be great, but at some point, do we do we see the character die? Um, I, I don't know if Filoni will ever do it. No. You don't I have don't to know. worry about that. You can, the way the storytelling works, the way the structure works, the way turning out media works, we can go our entire lifetimes without seeing Ahsoka killed. Right. And, and of course, we learn in the sequel trilogy, no one's ever really gone. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've got a whole panel dedicated to that. That's why Maria and I are not saying anything to you about it right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> We're geared up for it, Michael. <laughs> I mean, you know, I, I'll, I'll try and save some stuff for that. <laughs> <laughs> Just, no, go ahead. Throw whatever you want. No, 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 no. We need to focus on the. We need to focus. Hour. No, we need to focus on the Clone Wars. You're right. We need to focus on the Clone Wars. Well, from the, uh, the the chat room, a uh, which I'm not paying attention to at all, really. I, I just happened to be. Uh, Kyle asks for people who've never watched it but are still Star Wars fans. What's mm -hmm. our number one reason to try it out? It's more Star Wars. It, it's as uh, well, here comes blasphemy. It's more Star Wars than The New Hope was when you get right into well, the heart of it. Well, now come on, Stan. No, you <laughs> you, you, come you on. delve into Throw these... Throw him out! You delve into these characters. You delve into the situation. You truly begin to understand where Anakin is coming from. Yeah, I mean, just the character yeah. development aspects of it. You're, mm -hmm. you're getting... Anytime that you're able to have a, a, a show with seven seasons of material... You, you get to know these characters way more than you would if you just watched the prequel trilogy. Ex yeah, and it's not just that. The storytelling is tremendous. Right, yeah. Uh, the strands, the links together. Uh, you know, if you grow up, if you were, say, seven years old when the Clone Wars started, and, and as a kid you started watching this, you're ahead of the game on a lot of uh, on a lot of social economic situations because you inadvertently learned all that thanks to Jar Jar Binks and C-3PO mm -hmm. uh, and, and Anakin and Obi-Wan and the rest of them and all. And it's a story more than anything else. You, you had asked Marie what her favorite arc mm -hmm. was in what the last three seasons. No, just this season, just season just seven. Season. Well, of course it, it Mandalore, but one of my overall favorite arcs and not a lot of people uh, I look to agree with this it was about the humiliate. It was about Yoda learning humiliation in season six, mm -hmm. and coming right. to terms with where they have failed, and going yeah. forward from that, knowing that the Jedi had failed, right. and he still does what. And it fits perfectly into Revenge of the Sith. I mean, he knows he has shown it's all laid bare: the sins of the Jedi's, uh, the mistakes, mm -hmm. the problems, and everything, the arrogance that had consumed him. And Yoda has to bear that burden and still do what must be done. And it, yeah. so it's, it's story arcs like that that you should watch it for as and a Star Wars. I fan. mean, there, there are some silly things in, in oh, some of yeah. the earlier seasons. I mean, unfortunately, you know, I know Marie mentioned the, the droid episodes. Uh, I, I'm, I'm not real keen on those, but I'll let you have them, of course. That's but I'm not, I'm not real keen on some of those droid episodes. And, and, Me for um, Gascon is the best. Okay, now that is cool. That is a cool episode. I guess I'm talking about the one they were on the planet and the Patatites and the Ball Knob. Yeah, I'm not a really about that episode. I mean, it does have all the bounty hunters, which is cool, but I was not necessarily <laughs> very into that episode because it was so slapsticky, which Lucas was very yeah. into that whole thing. And so I that's mean, the first 20 minutes of Revenge of the Sith are pretty slapsticky. Oh, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's that's <laughs> that's L Lucas indulging some of his uh, old you know abbott and costello or you know guys like that he, he was really into that kind of stuff and so he indulged it a little bit too much at times but um luckily filoni was able to keep him grounded i mean because he was very much involved at least uh with the first like five seasons of the clone wars i mean lucas was there i mean those were all cartoon network um all you know stories that lucas was telling through filoni you know um and season six, I think, was more Filoni. And, of course, season seven, I think, was much more um, Dave Filoni. I mean, Dave Filoni is a very huge fan of all the clones. And like you were saying, Stan, I mean, there's some seven-year-olds and eight-year-olds, when they started watching this show, they knew all the names of every single clone. And oh, I, yeah. 
I could not tell you that I'm, I never delved into it that much. I, I know was, Rex. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, I've watched this series. God knows how many times I know Rex. <laughs> I know echo. I know fives just yeah. because those were, those were guys that we heard a lot about. Right. I mean, you know, we heard quite a bit about those characters and echo is an interesting character, especially in season seven where, you know, he's been captured um, by Watt Tambor and, and they're using him in a really gruesome way that, that episode Ugh. where he was just sort of plugged into with computer stuff. And I mean, it, it yeah. reminded me what, what is it? Superman three were the, or is it four where there's like the computer people? Oh, no, no, no. It was the, the AI computer yes. thing grabbed the one woman and yes. ch -ch 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 -ch. and yeah. real yeah. weird yeah that was three we we all the remember superman three right yeah. uh, of course, <laughs> of course. <laughs> it's streaming on hbo max which could really use the ratings by the way <laughs> <laughs> well if they'd get on roku then maybe i would watch yeah. them more thank but, you anyways no, no tangents allowed no <laughs> <Cut. laughs> but uh yeah so echo's gonna be interesting because presumably he has the chip yeah so if we're going to see a an order 66 happen and they're gonna have to explain that pretty quick with the bad batch i mean how is echo because you know at the end of season seven we see him go with the bad batch so he sort of mm -hmm. becomes part of their you know group yeah yeah they're gonna have to explain that i mean hopefully we're not gonna see echo get killed right away at the beginning of the bad batch i mean i hope that doesn't happen <laughs> I could almost awful. see the entire series opening up with the Order 66 going through and right. uh, Echo losing it and the other members experiencing something, but not quite the same thing due to their genetic makeup. Yeah, yeah. that would make sense. Because yeah. keep in mind, that chip, they are clones. That chip was made for a very specific genetic makeup. Mm -hmm. I mean, right. that would make sense that, you know, it, it, it would fizzle out on some of the clones that aren't quite right yeah and what was cool about at least the bad the bad batch crew is that they all had really unique abilities each one you know very much 80s action movie you've got your your you know sniper you've got your uh muscle you've got your tech guy the uh, a team yeah i mean it's very very much the a team type type <laughs> situation yeah. um so it it I'm I'm hoping that they explain it away that because of their genetic makeup, they never had the chip. I think that'll be easier from a storytelling standpoint, mm -hmm. yeah. just to to introduce the that concept that no, these guys never had the chip. Maybe Echo did, and we're gonna have to see how he got through it. Um, I mean Rex, I know you mentioned it. I mean Stan, Rex was able to fight it, but ultimately Ahsoka had oh, to so remove. No, she yeah. had to remove the chip. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you know, no ends ifs or buts. Yeah. But if he was able to, uh, I'm having some technical issues. Uh, if he was able to fight it off as much as that, then the Bad Batch should have a better shot at it. Yeah, I would think so. I mean, um, yeah, Tommy, that's an interesting thing. I don't yeah, want to talk about. I don't want to talk about Data or Star Trek, though. I'm not familiar. Yeah, that's with coming up at 10 p.m. tonight. Tommy. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> There's a reason that panel's at 10 and this one's at seven. And Rhett, there again, <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Rhett, there again, we're we're reading your uh, uh, we're reading your comments here. You got a whole hour coming up tomorrow, buddy. Be there. <laughs> 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 oh man so uh, i'm not really reading the chat joe does anybody else have any questions or comments they want that that legitimate nothing from tommy or rhett uh, I was gonna any, say, anybody else anybody else have any comments yeah. or anything 85 percent uh, is rhett. <laughs> okay, yeah well, rhett's well. comments are <laughs> but uh <laughs> i'm glad i'm not looking at this chat then probably, yeah. <laughs> probably, probably, probably yeah, it's 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 mostly red earl wants to know if he watches clone wars he can skip school everybody's going to be skipping school earl is not the reason as far as we know yeah. right right <laughs> If you got kids and they're skipping school, make them watch the Clone Wars. <laughs> Education, man. That's you right. You got to get it somehow. That's exactly right. So, um, what what about the where the Shadow Collective ends up? I mean, mm. Maul is captured. You know, at the end of this 
and you know we we obviously know a lot of the stuff that happens to Maul afterwards. Um, but but as we stand right now, you know the Shadow Collective is a bit in disarray mm-hmm. since their their leader now. Unless um, I don't know if if somebody. Well, that was one thing I was frustrated about with the Black Sun is they would not flat out say that this guy was Prince Zizor. Um, yeah. They, they, they <laughs> were, but, but they but they never said it. I think they even named the character something up else. I mean, but there is a character named something else, but that doesn't yeah. mean that Prince Caesar is not around right. somewhere. I don't this know why is, they uh... won't make that character, you know, quote unquote canon. I don't, oh. I don't, don't don't tease us, man. Well, they took. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, technically, he's not canon yet. I mean, no. you know. No, but the well, like you said, the Black Sun is, and uh, it, right the characters are there. The elements are there. I, I I would prefer to see more of the Black Sun than I would Pike the Pike. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I the Pike to me are just kind of easy bad guys and how about that easter egg dryden voss showing yes up? Yeah. that was fantastic i mean yes. oh I, my goodness i i loved that i mean because that that was some of the aspects of solo that i really enjoyed is just that we were really in the midst of the underworld stuff and all these crime <laughs> yeah. syndicates i mean that's essentially what that that movie was about i mean mm-hmm. it was all the goings on in and around all the crime syndicates which if the lando rumors are true that's where that's where you'll be able to get your crime syndicate stuff joe that's right yeah who who better well i mean that you know not to delve too deep into it but i heard other things that it was perhaps more a uh janna and lando series so it's more like set in the sequel trilogy era and then we'll do some flashbacks with um donald glover as as uh, lando so okay hey uh, more jana oh, like yeah. i'm totally no. down with that <laughs> no yeah <laughs> <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> i have a jana funko pop Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> i got the lego figure i think she came with a falcon didn't she yeah so but yeah, you know, yeah. i'm all about that i i'd like the so billy d and jana yeah and then flashbacks to donald yeah Mm -hmm. yeah that'd be great you can still get away with the criminal syndicate of course lando deals with the criminal syndicate depending on what clickbait site you look at that's what the the rumors are um so i'm not i'm I'm ignoring anything rett's saying at this point (laughs) yeah 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 Yeah. and then uh what i liked uh I, th- I think what we needed more of in Clone Wars was more people sitting around talking about trade embargoes. And I hate <laughs> we didn't get any of that. I know. Blockades, trade embargoes. There were so many blockades. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Lots of blockades. Lots so y'all are still games. so y'all are still on episode one uh, problems you have with episode one no i love episode <laughs> no, I, I do the politics, never forget, I eat it up. Never, yeah. never forget i yeah he was he was he was going for something different i do believe that as he got older he changed within himself lucas the concept of what the clone wars actually was yeah, you know, I believe he had one idea when he wrote A New Hope, and then you know by the time he has three kids were almost grown and he started filming Phantom Menace, he yeah he had to change a heart hmm. somewhere in there. Mm. Uh, it, uh, it, it's easier to kill robots than it is people. Wait, are you saying yeah. that there was not an outline already for all <laughs> this written? Is that? Uh, Look, if you if you go back and look at everything that that man had written down in notebooks, you can find an outline for anything, you know, even stuff that hasn't occurred yet, and and you can make it fit anything that Lucasfilm has ever done, and including Willow. It, it's just that it's just that hey, I he think picks Willow's, and chooses from those ideas. I think that planet's part of the Star Wars universe. That planet. Why would it not? Oh, wouldn't that be great? Not, yeah. Not. I mean, it's, that's what I want to see. I want to see the Willow Bad Batch. Yeah, I want to see the Bad Batch end up on the Willow Planet. Yeah, yeah. 
There's there's I'm different ones. Right. We, we saw with uh with um oh I can't remember the species that uh the guy from Rebels. There's there's force magic. I mean that species. Oh. Well, I mean, you got Zeb, to Zeb's species. Those guys were using some weird magic. I mean, there's well, all kinds of Well, you look at Palpatine. He shoots lightning magic. bolts from his fingers. Of course it's magic. I mean, yeah. the whole thing. It's, <laughs> it's all around us. Journal of the Willows. Yes. The <laughs> Journal, of the, Journal of the Willows. Yeah, that was her all. <laughs> oh, so it was just, Lucas was just like free riding and, and maybe mis, miswrote. And he meant to ta- say Willows instead of Wills. That makes, <laughs> that makes sense. I get it. I got, uh, that makes a lot of sense. So basically, we're, we encourage anybody that hasn't taken the time, please do watch Clone Wars. Oh, yeah. yeah. It doesn't. It, it the animation is just incidental to it and it's great animation i mean uh, yeah. you know with the clone wars unlike the sequel trilogy it enrich it enriches star wars yeah well no yeah, I'm not, <laughs> unlike the sequel trilogy we're dealing with you on that tomorrow oh right that's tomorrow <laughs> but, yeah bad, but the bad. clone wars <laughs> does greatly enrich star wars yeah, yeah, I mean, you know, I think it was Kyle that asked, you know, why he should watch. I mean, it's just, uh, for me, it just gives me more without having to sit down and read 20 different books. Yeah. I mean, I'm a visual, I like the, I like, I love the books, Marie. I read all of them. <laughs> I have not missed a, since canon, I have not missed a book. Well, me besides either. like the young, I know you do the young reader stuff, Marie, yeah. I haven't done the young reader stuff, but, yeah. um, and I love them, but I, I, I love the, the stuff on screen too, though. I mean, that, that's yeah. always been for me you know i've always been more of a a visual person when it comes to star wars not that and the books are fine but the clone wars gives you a lot of it covers a lot of ground it just does i mean only if only there was a place where people could go to pick up these star wars books Hal, oh, I don't oh, know you if you've like... been paying attention since January of 2020, <laughs> but there's about to be a great deal fewer of those places. <laughs> uh, Hoover, Hoover Library would be a great place. Yes, yes. Hoover yes. Library there. would Hoover be a great library. place. And Hoopla or Canopy or whichever service they use would be a great service if you're an audio person That's uh, right. to, to listen to the books. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Tommy, I don't know about the Howard the Duck and Willow scene i don't know if that's true or not no, do y'all don't joke? listen do not listen to anything tommy or rhett says <laughs> about anything there's a possibility that there's that's not, true though could not you not true. see that being it's true not, it's not true at all are you just like the what is it in one of the ewok movies there's winnie the poos in one of the scenes are <laughs> Like a stuffed animal, Winnie the Pooh oh, can oh, be yeah. seen in the forest of one of the in one of the Ewok movies. But I don't makes sense. Mm. Makes sense. I get when it. Is, when, yeah. are, when are the Ewok movies coming to Disney Plus? I don't know. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> <laughs> when is the holiday special coming? The, listen, How dare yeah. you say, the Ewok movies are more canon than they than they have ever been with the Blurgs. I mean, th- that's where Blurgs originated was the yeah. Ewok movies. And yeah. so True. it's more canon. Hey, I, if Wilford Brimley is canon Star Wars, I'm all in for that. I, I love that character. Diabetes. <laughs> Diabetes is also canon. Oops, Diabetes. I accidentally read one from Rhett. Don't read anything, Rhett. <laughs> so the best not to, he just keeps popping up over I and know. over again. Are, where, are you going, where are you going next, Michael? You got something in 10 minutes? I do, yeah. I've got another thing I'm doing, another recording thing I'm doing. Oh, Miss Marie, where are you going? Nowhere. <laughs> are you? Uh, let's see. So, uh, who's on the uh, who's on the Mandalorian versus uh, Murder She Wrote in Space panel at ten That's o'clock me. tonight? Is that okay. really? Wait, you're on a Star yeah. Trek panel concurrently with a. How are you going to do that, Joe? You're on two different panels at ten o'clock. No, it's a. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Wait, I don't know. Wait, wait, this will be good. The Mandal the that good. The Mandalorian and Murder She Wrote uh, versus Picard. Ooh, I, I don't J- even know how that one. Yeah. Did Josh approve that panel? How dare he? I, I, Josh will just approve anything. You can just <laughs> throw <laughs> stuff at Josh. I think what we're learning is yes, Josh will approve anything. Hey, I, I got ten people you never heard of, and they want an Avengers Assembled panel. Josh done. 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> How and do you they're bringing. Think I got involved in this thing. All right. All right. Yes. Whatever. Let's they want bring... to do it with puppets, Josh. <laughs> let's uh, Josh. let's let's plug stuff. Do you have anything you want to plug, Stan? Before we get off of this, Kingdom Casts podcast. Uh, you can listen to Albert complain about Star Wars there as well as you can anywhere else. Uh, that's just it. Uh, All right. Marie. Um, I do reviews one to three times a week of Star Wars books, every kind of Star Wars book, um, on the starwarsreview.blogspot.com. Once a month, I'm a co-host on the Tumbling Saber podcast, where we talk about books and Star Wars news. And on Twitter, I'm at Alia Morgan. So if you're curious about a specific genre of the Clone Wars, mm, mm-hmm. then hit me up and I will set you up with the perfect arc for you. And nice. before we go Because on, it covers every genre. I mean, that's a good thing to say, Marie, because yeah. it covers every yeah. genre. Look, You're right about uh, that. Michael, Joe, we need to point out, she's, in, she's a Star Wars archivist. She has all the information. She knows if she doesn't know off the top of her he- uh, head, she, she has it at her fingertips yeah. somewhere. Yeah, so, that's very yeah. true. Yep. Yep. Joseph, yeah, you Joe, doing? anything for you to plug? Buddy? <laughs> uh, uh, lots. Um, we uh, the the convention that I work for, Dragon Con, um, is virtual this year, and we have been doing online panels, much like the panel that we are on right now. And we've been doing them for like three months. So you're welcome, Dragon Con. We <laughs> we perfected it before. <laughs> but uh, but um, we we uh, go to the f- facebook.com slash groups American sci-fi classics and we're talking about stuff like from ten years ago and older so Manimal yeah. Night Rider you know I don't there know. it is again take it's a shot Manimal <laughs> Star Wars come out more than ten years ago we should talk about that too. Yes. Uh, and you can find me on the Twitters at, and the Instagrams at Yojo Crow. That's right. And the nice thing about Joe's live streaming for Dragon Con is if you have Facebook on in the background and aren't paying attention, it just starts. Yep. <laughs> whether you want to hear it, whether you want to deal with it, there it is. Nope. Uh, it's like, and it's difficult to get rid of. <laughs> like, hey guys, what are you doing? Oh Michael, gosh. what have you got? Other yeah, than yeah. We uh, weekly. I don't have Rhett. No, we <laughs> weekly. Uh, I have a, a movie podcast called the Deuce Cast Movie Show. We have been doing that show myself, David Dollar, and uh, Earl Salser that you saw on here have been doing that show for gosh ten years now. Uh, sure. So we're we're in the the four hundred and forty range as far as episodes are concerned. Um, if there's a genre that you would like to hear about. Just let me know and I'll uh, let you know what episode to listen to. Uh, but then also I do um, occasionally, but very rarely, a podcast with Rhett and Tommy called Car- Card Trader Illuminati. Um, it, <laughs> this, it means nothing and the show is, is incoherent, um, as, as is the name <laughs> of it. But you can look that one up as well. We may or may not be recording episodes of that in the future. Um, I like to leave my options open with that show completely. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> And every time that i've done a panel with you you guys michael you're like well no we're not doing any more of those and he- <laughs> it's, a- it's accurate it's it's i like to leave my options open with that garbage yeah. um but uh uh you can hit me up on twitter though at, at the michael nip um it's mostly star wars talk on there uh although lately i've been um happy that sports are back so you'll hear me talking some sports every once in a while as well on on the Twitter. So uh, this was fun, guys. I love the Clone Wars. And uh, yeah. I look forward to tomorrow's po- uh, panels. Oh, we do too, Michael. We do too. <laughs> Sounds like you guys have something planned for me. I don't Yes, I'm, it does, does Oh, it, well, I'm excited. Oh, Babu Frick. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Bring your little buddy Rhett and just show up on time, Michael. <laughs> I, I will. I will. Well, I, that's, I, think that, I think we can wrap this thing up unless anybody's got anything else. I'm good. I'm good. Crow, I'll see you at 10 p.m. in Sorry. whatever it is we're doing. Yeah, <laughs> and thank, thank you. I guess we do need to officially say thank you for uh, for the for, for the Hoover, Hoover Library. Kristen, uh, Josh, everybody Kristen, at the Josh, Hoover Library. Thank you so much for having us. 
finding a way to do the virtual uh, sci-fi fantasy fest. It's really been yeah. a really fun week. Uh, and this weekend is chock full of really great stuff. So it really is. They, yeah. they do. Thank you. Hoover library. Job. Thank, Thank you. you. And when I was talking about taking a shot, I meant of soda. <laughs> 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 All right. I'm out of here, guys. Talk to you later. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.